All right, thank you for that introduction. Uh, my name is David Rechlis. I'm joining you from Texas A&M at Galveston. Um, I'm in the Department of Marine Sciences there, although I did do my graduate studies at Penn State, so uh, I very much enjoyed that last talk, so thank you guys. And my north, south, east, west, I think still is recovering from my time at Penn State. Um, but uh, I'm part of the Department of Marine Sciences at A&M Galveston. Um, I'm also affiliated with the Center for Texas Beaches and Shores. We do a lot of work with uh, management and policy in the coastal zone and near coastal waters with a particular emphasis on uh, flooding, both freshwater and storm surge events associated with hurricanes or cyclones as they are known in some part of the world, some parts of the world. And that's what I'll be chatting with you guys about today. So this project uh, that I'll be describing um, is a web map that we developed. It was part of a larger project, however, um, one of my colleagues, Dr. Wesley Highfield, was the PI and uh, was funded by the Texas General Land Office. That's why we have um, their logo, logo on our slides. And um, the overall purpose of this project was to assess the national level economic consequences and regional level insurance implications of constructing a coastal spine. Now you might say, what is a coastal spine? And this is somewhat important, so I'll pause here to explain that. I guess I should remain close to the mic. Ah, thank you. Uh, so you see in white here the solid white line. That is the existing seawall on Galveston Island constructed after uh, the uh, deadliest natural disaster event in US history, the hurricane of 1900. Um, they finished it about 12, 15 years after that. Uh, they also raised the entire island by 12 feet. So pretty significant undertaking. Uh, there is now discussion about extending that via what's known as the coastal spine, and that you can see that with the dotted um, line symbol there, uh, including potentially a floodgate at the entrance to the Houston Ship Channel. Uh, so, I was brought in uh, because the General Land Office and our PI wanted a web map that would help communicate um, both uh, surge hazards in general and some of the potential benefits of building this coastal spine structure. Um, so some ad circ modeling was done to look at um, how building the spine would affect surge scenarios. And I had a number of goals uh, that I kind of sketched out in advance of creating this tool and I should note uh, time pressure was significant. I had about six months to pull this together with the assistance of a postdoc. Um, so I wanted to show economic impacts at local to national scales. Um, try to communicate not just that this will have significant effects on local property owners and businesses, but also knock-on effects for, say, gas prices and uh, national economy. Uh, demonstrate the economic benefits, potentially, of the significant investment that the spine structure would require and provide some uh, linked views with policy relevance summaries, drawing on some of the lessons from data visualization. Um, a simple, easy to use interface with high discoverability, and um, we wanted to ensure that we used a responsive design to allow those on mobile devices to also um, explore our tool. So some of the challenges that I recognized in advance, and have s many of these have I think have since been confirmed as significant challenges associated with this work included uh, identifying the user. So we're sort of serving most, multiple masters here, our PI for the project, um, Dr. Highfield, the funding organization. Um, since we were creating essentially two maps, uh, we needed to be responsive to local, to regional stakeholders, but also national stakeholders, those from say Washington who might look at the map and say, well, what does this mean for the US economy? Uh, simplifying complex and abstract impa impacts. There was a lot of data to process here. Um, and doing so while retaining policy relevance, so making it simple enough so that people could um, access the information quickly, understand what they were looking at, but not oversimplifying things. We wanted to show impacts over multiple spatial scales and time periods. And we wanted to do all of this while limiting interface complexity. And I'll let you guys um, assess 
for yourself how effective we may have been. Um, so to do this, uh, we used ArcGIS JavaScript API, um, a couple of JavaScript libraries outside of that for some of our um, linked views. And uh, for the layout, we used Bootstrap, which was helpful. Um, so this is what our first sort of beta design looked like that we had some users um, take a few minutes to explore through a focus group, which I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, we had a sidebar where users could select scenario options. We, uh, we wanted that to be visible at all times rather than hidden uh, to improve discoverability, large icons. Uh, and that's where you would select things such as your storm scenario. You know, it would just be the kind of hurricane we get pretty frequently in that part of the Gulf Coast or um, a less frequent, uh, stronger event. Um, whether or not you would take into account uh, future land use um, or future sea level rise, and critically for this project, whether or not the impacts uh, would be lessened by the construction of that uh, potential coastal spine. And so here this is showing inundation for a future land use scenario with sea level rise, 100 year storm, and uh, on the left we have without a coastal spine structure, on the right with one, and you see the uh, average depth of expected flooding goes down, the number of expected structures uh, to be flooded goes down as well. And then the, this down here, oh, you can't see my mouse, but, oh, you can. Um, national impacts, that's that linked uh, national map. You could get there also via this national map tab up here. And that would show, uh, this is the effect on uh, GDP at the state level. Uh, we also did damage associated with that inundation. Um, and how that would change under different scenarios. And then for that national tab, I've zoomed in here on um, uh, some parts of that design. Uh, it was hard for me to reproduce the earlier version of this because we made significant changes. But we initially had a line graph, and we had lots and lots of options. Um, so that I should say that sidebar that you saw previously was still present here. I just didn't capture it in the screenshot I zoomed in for you. On the left, though, you see lots of different drop-down options um, for things like how long the plants on the petrochemical plants on the ship channel will be shut down, what sector you wanted to look at for impacts, which state. It was just too much, and the line graph was confusing. And that was borne out by our focus group uh, results. So um, we wanted to evaluate, among other things, ease of use, effects of these maps on risk perceptions, effects on coastal spine support, uh, how decision relevant this information was, and potential to communicate regional and national effects. And so we had a number of methods we employed, including um, asking our participants to use a think aloud protocol, talk about what they were doing with the maps, and we recorded that. We also did some uh, task load index assessments, asked them how mentally taxing, how physically taxing were your interactions with the tools. And we did some pre-post assessments for risk perceptions and spine support and had some general post-task discussion. Uh, so we asked our participants to perform a number of exercises with the maps, including some training, which uh, had some screenshots to guide them along where they were just doing simple map reading. And then for our um, analysis or assessment tasks, our users had to pull those numbers from the map, but then also think about in more general terms what they meant for the um, impacts in specific communities on the map. And I should note all of our stakeholders here were local, uh, so they were six Houston Galveston area participants over two different sessions. We had some city planners, emergency managers, chamber of commerce folks, uh, resource managers, et cetera. Um, our pre-post results for risk perceptions and uh, support for the spine, we didn't see much movement here. People came to the map pretty concerned about storm surge. They left pretty concerned. Likewise, in terms of support for the spine. Um, but more interestingly, particularly I think for this audience, we did see some differences in the uh, NASA task load index results. Uh, as expected, folks found the training exercises pretty easy. Um, we had them do three tasks with our local map, since they were local stakeholders. And 
uh, than just one task with the national map. Um, and they found that national map task very difficult. So we wanted to focus a lot of our efforts in revising the map and addressing some of the issues that they had with that national map. And so breaking things down within the NASA task load index, um, you can see across the board people found this por portion of the tool um, difficult, significant temp temporal demands, significant effort um, uh, required to answer the questions to use the national interface, and folks came away from it pretty frustrated as well, and they rated their performance using the tool pretty low on the scale. Um, some specific comments on that. Uh, keep it simple, too confusing. Tell me how much gas will cost. Initially, we didn't look at gas price impacts. We just mapped more abstract things like GDP. Um, charts and graphs, not helpful. I didn't intuitively understand the displays or charts. Need clarification on what's being displayed. Need better directions. Reading chart and map key was confusing. Hard to understand results and what it means. Um, and this was echoed by our general discussion, where people were generally positive, said it was easy to use, but they did note a couple bugs, the need for directions, um, and again, highlighted that the national impacts were a bit too confusing and abstract. Uh, they did, I, I think, gratifyingly for this audience, think, oh, visualizations are great, they're worth, worth a thousand words, you know, echoing the old adage about um, an, an image. Um, so with that, all that in mind, we developed a second version of the tool. It included more directions, um, uh, a pop-up initially that explained how to use the map. Um, and then we redesigned the national impacts with um, a bar chart instead of line chart, um, added directions that were persistent down to the lower right, and um, significantly reduced the number of options here at the top of the national view. Um, so now you're just filtering by state or selecting um, what kind of impact you wanted to see, whether it was GDP um, or effects on income or gas prices. So some lessons from all of this, and I, I think none of these will be terribly surprising to this audience. Um, you should know your user base and engage them early and often. So given the tight time frame here and some of the tensions associated with different users involved, we were only able to have the one focus group, although I subsequently corresponded via email with some folks and got their feedback on version two. Um, it's important also to match tool complexity to use cases appropriate for the map scale and level of aggregation. So for the national map, we're looking at state level impacts and um, impacts that were fairly abstract. You know, people don't think about um, things in terms of GDP at the state level in many cases. And given that and the fact that the national map in particular was aimed at maybe policymakers in Washington, um, we thought that it's probably best to reduce complexity there um, in terms of the data, the interface, and the visualizations. And so we tried to accomplish that to some extent with our second version of the map. Uh, this is a link to an active version of the tool. Um, if any of you are interested in taking a peek, uh, I do have it on my machine here. I know you're, off, you're all probably eager to uh, head out for lunch as well, but uh, if you're interested, come up and see me. And here are my references for the talk. Again, small, but if there's a specific um, reference you'd like to know more about, again, come see me. And thank you very much.